Hello, um, guys, you're welcome to today's uh, lecture. Uh, this is going to be uh, the beginning of a series of videos that will be coming your way uh, in order to help you finish the rest of our topics for um, this course. Okay, so uh, we are going to start with complex numbers. Uh, we'll start with an introduction about what a complex number is. Uh, we'll define it formally. But before the formal definitions, I'm going to give you some motivation for complex numbers. And then uh, from there, we'll look at some of the properties of the complex number. Um, and then we'll move on to do uh, more interesting things. Uh, once we are done with complex number, hopefully in this time, we'll go on to the next topic uh, on our list. Okay? So, uh, what is a complex number? Now, you are familiar with the um, classifications, right? Classifications of number systems. Um, where uh, you start with this is the natural numbers, we know what the natural numbers are, right? You have natural numbers um, one, two, three, and so on. And then we learn what we mean by whole numbers. Where the whole numbers, now you add a zero to the natural numbers, you have two, three, zero, one, two, three, and so on and so forth. Those are whole numbers, and then you have an addition of uh, negative numbers to get the integers. And then, so you have the integers, um, and these, you know, from minus infinity, you have negative 1, negative 2, 0, 1, 2, and so forth, and we call them the integers. Now, these are all important uh, numbering systems. And then you come to uh, what is what's this, uh, the rational, a rational number, all right, which are numbers which can be written as you know a number a over b. If b is not equal to a zero, for instance, one over five, you know, two over whatever seven, and so on and so forth. Of course, then you also have what is called the irrational numbers, right? The irrational numbers, and these are numbers which cannot be put in this form, right? Typical examples are the number pi and then the square root of 2, for instance. These are called irrational numbers. Well, all these um, numbering systems together form the um, real numbers. This is the real number system, right? So these are called real numbers. So we have the real numbers, and once we know these real numbers, we get the natural whole numbers integers, rational and irrational numbers, we can perform operations on these numbers, all right? So for instance, you know, we have giving A and B, which are members of the real numbers, okay? You can add them, right, if you need to. You can subtract. You can take A, you can divide them, but B not equal to zero. And then more interestingly, you can find the square root of the real number. Well, if A is not zero, okay? So you can perform all these operations, you can multiply them, you can add, subtract them, and you, um, you can take the square root of positive real numbers. So these are operations you can perform under the real number system. Now the question arises, uh, what happens if you have a negative Right, a negative number under the square root, under the radical sign. What do you do in that case? So, if a number A is, for instance, a real number, right, and you, uh, you come across, let's say, negative 9, and you are dealing with real numbers, then you will see that this is not defined. Because we really don't know what that is under real numbers. But we want to know that. So, under real numbers, giving x squared is equal to the number 4, where x, where x is a real number, we can solve this equation, right? We can solve this to get x is equal to the square root of 4, and I thought part is plus or minus. You can just take the positive if you want, and then this will give me plus or minus 2. So we know how to solve this equation if x is a real number, okay? Now, if x is a real number, then x squared is equal to negative 4 for x. It's real. Now, what will be the solution of that? This will have no solution if x is a real number. 
because in the real numbers we don't have any definition for the square root of a negative number. Okay? And as mathematicians, we want to be able to solve that equation. Okay? And so one way you do that is if you like extend the real number system to encompass this type of cases where you have um, x squared equals negative one. And so you do that by introducing what we call complex numbers. Okay? Good. So how do you proceed from there? How do you define something to be a complex number? Well, you can go back to the real number system and borrow some of the techniques that are there, right? And uh, the real number system, I have, uh, if I have the square root, if I have the square root of A times B, A times B, where both A and B are positive, of course, we know that I can rewrite this as the square root of A times the square root of what? B. Okay? So why don't we apply the same technique under uh, complex numbers? So, suppose I have the square root of, you know, negative 4. Why don't I say that this, I can really split this in the square, into the square root of, well, this is the same as 4 times negative 1, right? Which means I can actually write this as the square root of 4 multiplied by the square root of negative 1. And that will give me, well, the square root of 4 is what? 2. So I have 2 multiplied by the square root of negative 1. So, to define what complex complex number is, will be easier if I can define something, right? To represent the square root of negative 1. So that is where complex numbers come in. So, the idea of a complex number says define some quantity i and let the i be the square root of negative 1. Well, of course, this implies that i squared is negative 1. So that once you define i to be equal to the square root of negative 1, which means that you have a representation for the square root of a number, of a negative number, I should say. So, which means that Instead of a negative square root of uh, square root of negative one, I can replace all of this by what I call i here. Okay, I'll tell you what the name of i is. So this implies square root of negative four can be written as two times i, and this we call a complex complex number. Okay, so complex numbers. Uh, another set of the numbering system, okay? But in this case, it is a bigger set compared to um, the real number system because now you can deal with cases like this, right? If I have an equation where I have x squared equals negative 1, I know how to represent it. I can actually solve this and have a solution. And the solution will be given by 2i, alright? What it means is that I can, there's a number is 2i, such so that if I square it, okay, I can get, um, I can get a negative 4, okay? So, now, you, so you can take this idea and generalize it and define formally what um, a complex number is. So, this is, this is an introduction and a motivation for complex numbers. So, now let's move on to a formal definition of what we mean by a complex, complex number. Let me let me start from here. Okay. Now you have you have the formal definitions in your lecture notes, so make sure you consult those. Right? I'm not going to be writing the wordy stuff. I'm going to explain the concepts here. So consult the lecture notes for um, the detailed definitions. So by definition, a complex number. Complex, complex number is basically a number that can be put in the form, let's, take, let's call it Z, that can be put in the form A plus B I. That's a complex number. If I have a number which can be put in this form, let the complex number be Z is equal to A plus B I, such that this is important, A and B are both 
real numbers. So these numbers must be real. Okay? Then you multiply this by i. Now, a here, well, the i, let me define i first. i is usually called the, an imaginary imaginary unit. Okay? As opposed to the real one, the real number system that we know of. We don't know of these, right, in the real terms. So that is why it's called an imaginary unit. And the a there, the number without the i multiplying x is called the real part of the complex number. Real part of z. Okay? And it's often represented as real part of the complex number z. And the b is called, of course, the imaginary, imaginary part of the complex number z. So it's represented by this. Okay, so formally that is what we mean by a complex number. A complex number is a number that can be written in this form where A and B are real numbers, right? So A can be 2, can be negative 1, can be 0. B here is also real, could be 1, 0, negative 1, 2, whatever. Both must be real numbers. And then you have an I, which is a imaginary unit. I here we have already seen the definition for I. I has the square root of negative one. Okay? A is a real and B is the imaginary part of it. So that is a complex number. So examples of complex numbers will be this, right? I bet you already know um, how to form some complex numbers. So examples, simple examples will be for instance, let's call this z1, the number 2 plus, let's say 5i, will be a complex number. z2, the number 3 minus 7i, will also be a complex number, right? Um, of course, you can, you can write in different types. Uh, 2 will be a complex number as well, okay? Why is that? Well, it fulfills the definition of a, what a complex number is. So 3 is a complex number. It, ju it, it just means that the imaginary part is 0. The B there is 0. Okay? And of course, if I have, I have Z4 is equal to 7i, that is, of course, purely imaginary. What it means is that the real part of it is 0. The A is 0. So that is complex, 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 complex. Of course, in this case, the real part, real part of uh, Z2 here, the 3, and then the imaginary part of Z2 is going to be what? Negative, negative 7. Alright? So that is by definition what we mean by um, a complex a complex number. Good. Now we are going to um, look at some other interesting properties of complex numbers, some further definitions. Okay, so this is basically introductions to uh, what a complex, what complex numbers are. So let's look at what we mean by the conjugate of a complex number. Conjugate. Um, the gate of complex number. Complex number. Okay. Now, before I forget, you know that the real or real numbers, they are denoted by this, right? Real numbers are denoted by this in math. And complex numbers, complex numbers are denoted by the letter C, which Yes. Somehow like the C D. Ah. Looks like the C D. Okay? So that's a complex number. If you see this, so if I say if I say Z is an element of this, then I'm saying that Z is a, it's a complex number. Okay? So that's just by the way. So you have real, you have complex numbers. What do we mean by the conjugate of a complex number? 
So if I have a complex number z, which is a plus b i, the conjugate of the complex number is denoted by z bar or w bar, whatever letter you use for a complex number. They put a bar, right? And then, most importantly, you have to negate, okay? Negate the, um, the imaginary part of it. So z bar is equal to a minus b i. Okay? So if this is a complex number, the conjugate of it is given by this. We'll see why this is important. The conjugate of a complex number actually helps in simplifying so much mathematical expressions. So they are very useful. Alright? That's why we are defining them now. And also, also, note that this B could be in front of the the I, I should say, could be in front of the B or okay, behind it. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter where you put it. So you can write you can write the complex number as A plus B I or A plus I B. Same. Okay? Good. So that is that is uh, that is um, so we have defined what a complex number is. Look at some examples of complex numbers. See why they are important. Basically, you know, you can solve more problems. You have more tools, right? More tools to be able to solve uh, problems that you couldn't solve under the real number system, right? Like x squared is equal to negative two or negative one. You can also solve it when you, when you expand your definition of the number systems. Okay, so. Let's do some examples of this. So if z is equal to 2 plus 3i, then the conjugate of z will be 2 minus 3i. Okay? Number 1, 2, if z is equal to, let's say 3 minus 7i, then the conjugate of that will be 3. Real part is fine, you have to negate the imaginary part. This becomes plus 7i. And that gives you uh, the conjugate of the number. Okay, so I'm going to make the videos short. Um, this is that just an introduction to what complex numbers are. In the next, um, in the next video, I'm going to um, we're going to prove some properties, some some a few of the properties of complex numbers. You have more of them in your lecture notes that you can take a look Alright? So expect um, expect the continuation of this complex numbers. See